Helicopter Flying Handbook 11-6 Helicopter Emergencies and Hazards Now, let's delve into another fascinating aspect of helicopter dynamics. Weathercock stability, occurring in the 120 to 240 degree region. Picture the helicopter attempting to weather vane, or weathercock, its nose into the relative wind. Without some resisting pedal input, the helicopter slowly makes an uninvited turn to the right or left, depending on the wind. Allowing a right yaw rate to build up, especially with the tail in this region, can lead to a surprisingly rapid acceleration of the yaw. To avoid the onset of loss of tail rotor effectiveness in this downwind situation, it's crucial to maintain control of the yaw rate and stay focused on flying the helicopter. Now, let's shift gears to the tail rotor vortex ring state, unfolding between 210 to 330 degree. Here, winds in this region trigger the development of a tail rotor vortex ring state. The outcome? A non-uniform, unsteady flow into the tail rotor, causing thrust variations and resulting in yaw deviations. Swift pedal movements become essential to counter these changes in tail rotor thrust when hovering in a left crosswind. Maintaining a precise heading becomes a bit tricky, but unless corrective action is delayed, it's not a significant problem. However, high pedal workload, lack of concentration, and overcontrolling can lead to the unwelcome guest to loss of tail rotor effectiveness. Now, let's soar into the skies and explore loss of tail rotor effectiveness at altitude. As we ascend to higher altitudes where the air is thinner, tail rotor thrust and efficiency take a hit. Thin air means power plant responses to changes are slower. When operating at high altitudes and hefty gross weights, especially during hovering, tail rotor thrust might not be sufficient to maintain directional control, opening the door for loss of tail rotor effectiveness. In such thin air conditions, consider trimming down gross weights or restricting operations to lower density altitudes. To navigate around loss of tail rotor effectiveness, consider these strategic moves. Keep that rotor RPM at maximum power on levels. A decrease in main rotor RPM means a proportional drop in available anti-torque thrust. Steer clear of tailwinds when speeds dip below 30 knots. Loss of translational lift in such scenarios means increased power demands and additional anti-torque pressures. Dodge out of ground effect or OGE operations and high power demands when speeds are below 30 knots at low altitudes. Stay vigilant about wind conditions, especially when hovering in winds ranging from 8 to 12 knots. Loss of translational lift unexpectedly cranks up power demands and anti-torque needs. Be mindful that maintaining a considerable amount of left pedal might limit your ability to counteract an unforeseen right yaw. Stay alert to shifts in wind conditions, often encountered while flying along ridges or around buildings. Execute right turns with care. This not only curbs the effects of rotating inertia but also eases the load on the tail rotor for yaw control. So, there you have it, navigating the intricate balance of forces and aerodynamics in the world of helicopters. Now, let's explore the recovery technique for an uncontrolled right yaw. Apply full left pedal and, at the same time, nudge the cyclic forward to boost speed. If you've got altitude to spare, consider easing off the power. As the recovery kicks in, tweak the controls for a smooth transition to normal forward flight. Always have a recovery path in mind, especially when winding down to an out-of-ground effect or OGE hover. Execute the recovery promptly if an uncommanded yaw rears its head. Now, let's touch upon collective pitch reduction, a move that can help rein in the yaw rate but may lead to a hefty descent rate. A sudden, large increase in collective could amp up the yaw rate and dial down rotor RPM. It's a judgment call based on your assessment of available altitude for recovery. If the rotation persists and a date with the ground seems inevitable, autorotation might be your best bet. Keep that left pedal engaged until the rotation halts, then adjust to maintain your heading. For more insights into unanticipated right yaw scenarios, dive into Advisory Circular, AC-9095. Shifting gears, let's delve into the world of main drive shaft or clutch failure. This crucial component, nestled between the engine and the main rotor transmission, is the powerhouse channeling engine might to the main rotor. In some helicopters, especially those with piston engines, a drive belt steps in for the drive shaft. When this critical link falters, the effects mimic an engine failure, prompting the need for autorotation. A break in the drive shaft or belt unloads the engine, resulting in an overspeed. Close that throttle promptly to prevent further havoc. In some helicopters, the tail rotor drive system soldiers on even if the main drive shaft bites the dust. 
In this scenario, a tail rotor overspeed may rear its head, swiftly close the throttle and ease into an autorotation. Knowing your helicopter's system and failure modes is key. Mechanical gremlins can sometimes throw a wrench into your plans. If you suspect a malfunction, your first priority is always to maintain rotor RPM. If the rotor RPM is holding steady with normal power settings, it might be an instrument glitch, in which case, fly to a safe landing area. However, if the rotor RPM is on a downward spiral, you're dealing with a driveline failure. Now, let's navigate the waters of hydraulic failure. Many helicopters lean on hydraulic actuators to tame those high control forces. The hydraulic system, with actuators on each flight control, a pump typically driven by the main rotor transmission, and a fluid reservoir, is a lifeline. Keep an ear out for warning signs, a grinding or howling noise, increased control forces, and limited control movement. If trouble is on the horizon, a shallow approach to a running or roll on landing is your best bet. Reduce airspeed to ease control forces, check and recycle the hydraulic switch and circuit breaker, and disable the hydraulic system by flipping the switch off. This precaution prevents inadvertent restoration of hydraulic power, especially perilous close to the ground. In some helicopters where control forces are Herculean without hydraulic aid, multiple independent hydraulic systems come to the rescue. Hydraulic accumulators might also be in play, offering a brief lifeline in emergencies if the pump decides to take a breather. This gives you enough wiggle room to bring the helicopter in for a normal landing. Here, we've taken a journey through the intricate recovery techniques and system failures within the dynamic realm of helicopters. Always remember, knowledge serves as your co-pilot in these scenarios. Stay well informed, stay vigilant, and ensure those rotors keep turning. Governors and fuel control units, the silent conductors of engine power adjustment, step into the spotlight when the collective pitch comes into play. But what if they decide to take a break? If the governor or fuel control unit disengages, get ready for a manual RPM maintenance performance. In the case of a high side hiccup, engine and rotor RPM might decide to dance into the stratosphere. If the throttle proves incooperative, it's time to close shop and smoothly transition into an autorotation. On the flip side, if the low side decides to take a break, returning to the usual RPM maintenance might be a challenge. Prepare to lower the collective to keep the rotor RPM humming. A running or roll on landing could be on the agenda if the engine can maintain its rhythm. Always remember, before panicking about any mechanical hiccups, ensure that rotor RPM isn't doing the cha-cha in response to your control inputs. If it stays in the green, it's likely an instrument glitch, not a mechanical tango. Now, let's navigate our way through abnormal vibrations. Helicopters, with their multitude of rotating parts, possess a natural rhythm. However, when vibrations go off course, premature wear and structural challenges may arise. Envision three distinct tiers, low, medium, and high-frequency vibrations. Low-frequency vibes, the gentle sways of the main rotor disc, may signal an out-of-balance blade or worn-out parts. The direction, vertical, lateral, or horizontal that holds the key to troubleshooting. Feel the vibes through the controls or airframe, and you're on the path to pinpointing the source. Medium frequency vibrations, the steady hum between main rotor low notes and engine tail rotor high notes, can be traced to engine and transmission cooling fans, air conditioner compressors, or driveline components. Feel it resonate through the entire airframe? Brace yourself for pilot fatigue. High frequency sensations, the rapid beat of the tail rotor, often reach your feet through the pedals. This tingle, though, could turn into a troublesome vibration party if the tail rotor disc decides to go off-key. Keep those feet awake. Piston engines, no strangers to vibes, might add some jitters when they run into hiccups like spark plug fouling or carburetor mishaps. Turbine engines, with their high RPM antics, play hard to catch. Vibrations at 30,000 revolutions per minute internally? Hold on tight, as these engines could be on the verge of a rapid disintegration when they hit a sour note. Now, let's tune into tracking and balance. Modern tools, armed with accelerometers, can pick up the vibe direction, frequency, and intensity. The built-in software then takes the lead, pointing you to the origin and offering a backstage pass to corrective action. Think of it as the helicopter's version of a health and usage monitoring system or HUMS, capturing engine and transmission performances and choreographing rotor track and balance. It's the seasoned maestro in the rotorcraft industry, now taking a more prominent spot in the orchestra. So, there you have it, the vibrant world of vibrations and their intricate role in the helicopter symphony.